In this video, we're going to take a look at creating a plastic shaft in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to tackle some more plastic part design, but this time I want to take a look at creating a plastic shaft. Now, in most cases, if you're designing a part for manufacture, whether it's 3D printing or CNC machining, you can just make the part you need. However, with plastic part design, that's not always the case. You have to come up with some creative solutions to ensure that you have consistent wall thickness, draft in the correct directions, and overall, you have a consistent part. So with something like this, with a shaft, we're aiming for a two millimeter wall thickness. The shaft right now is 100 millimeters long, and we have a six millimeter diameter section and a 10 millimeter diameter section. Now, the general idea here is that we can't just mold this part as is. With the large amount of plastic in the center, as it cools, the center portion is gonna stay molten, and the end result will be a shaft that has a bow or a curve to it. So we need to figure out a way that we can turn this into a plastic part. Now, this is a fairly simple model, but if you wanna follow along, you can go to the description of the video and you can download this data set to get started. Now, as I mentioned, this part is 100 millimeters long. It has six millimeter diameter on one side, 10 in the center, and there's about 10 millimeters on each end. What we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about ways in which we can redesign this part so that we use plastic part modeling. The first thing that I'm gonna do is hide this body, and I'm gonna get started with a new sketch, and I'm gonna do this directly on my right plane. I'm gonna start with a circle at the center, and I'm gonna make it 10 millimeter diameter gonna hit escape and then X on the keyboard or use the sketch palette option construction. So this is gonna help me get started and understand the size of the center shaft that I need. Whatever the design is intended for, we have to think about the design intent. So in this case, the six millimeter sections on the side are the critical bits and the center section is really just for strength. So it doesn't need to be completely a cylinder. One thing that we have to think about is the direction of pull. Now in this case, I'm gonna pull in the Z direction. So I'm gonna use that as my reference. So I'm gonna draw some lines, first a vertical line, and then I'm gonna turn this into construction. Next, I wanna draw some additional lines and I'm simply gonna come down, hit the check mark here, I'm gonna come down over here, hit the check mark there. Using my constraints, I wanna make sure that these are horizontal to the origin and I wanna give them an angle. So we need to make sure that these lines have enough draft. So I'm gonna make sure that they have at least one degree of draft. It's pretty minimal, but I do wanna make sure that I have at least the correct amount of draft. For some reason, it's gonna put this way out here, but I'm gonna link those two together by just selecting them then drag them down back into this atmosphere. Next, we need to figure out the width. Now, remember I said that I want this to be two millimeters overall. So I'm gonna make that two millimeters at the top, and then I'm gonna dimension the distance from that point to this line, and I'm gonna make it that two millimeters divided by two. Now, in general, I'll create some parameters that house things like the draft angle and the wall thickness, but we're gonna skip that step for this design. So this design now gives us a rib that we can pull vertically. However, we don't have anything on the left and right hand side. So I need to use my line tool but remember now that we are going to be drafting or pulling from the Z direction, so this can be completely horizontal here. We do have the arc to worry about, and you'll notice that I haven't really handled this arc section yet, and that's something that we're gonna come back to. Next, I wanna use the dimension tool to make sure that this is at least one millimeter, but again, I am gonna use that two millimeters divided by two or link it to this dimension. We are gonna mirror this top and bottom, and I'm just gonna draw the one on the other side, and I wanna make sure that this is not perpendicular, but it instead it should be collinear with this line. That'll automatically control its height as well as its location. All right, so we're making some progress here. I'm gonna kind of move this out of the way. We need to think about this top section, which can be just an arc. So I'm gonna to go to my arc tool. I'm gonna to go from here to here and make it an arc. You'll notice that it's underdefined. What we can do is we can select it, control select the outside and make them equal. That'll fully define that portion. 
This one can be an arc. However, we need to be mindful of the fact that it still needs draft. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line. This is gonna be for construction. And we're gonna give this line one degree. We also wanna make sure that its endpoint is horizontal to the origin. And I'm also gonna turn it into construction. Now, the reason that I did this is because I'm gonna make an arc that is tangent with that line. So this ensures that tangency there, and sometimes you might want to manually adjust it and make sure that it is tangent with the correct instance. So go ahead and apply that tangency. That tangency is gonna make sure that we have one degree of draft right here. All right, for that one, I am gonna mirror that to the other side. So I'm gonna select that. We wanna use this vertical line and mirror it over. I am gonna need a horizontal line for mirrors. So I'm just gonna draw one in there, drag it all the way over. And we can mirror everything from the top to the bottom. I'm not quite done yet because I do wanna add a little bit of material in these corners. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a small cylinder. Now, typically you wouldn't need this. You could have a sharp corner here, but because we are talking about 100 millimeters long, I think I wanna add just a little bit more material in the corners. So I'm gonna do a four millimeter diameter and I'm just gonna leave that as it is. Next, we're gonna to go to mirror and I wanna take everything from the top and take these lines and these small lines. Now, if you have problems selecting that small arc, just hold down the left mouse button and then you can figure out which selection is gonna be the correct one. And then we wanna mirror those across our horizontal line. So this is going to be the center shaft. We're gonna extrude this out, pick all the regions that we're interested in. Make sure we grab these little corners as well. Again, in this case, those little corners might be okay, but we're gonna go 50 millimeters in this direction and we're gonna do this symmetric. If you wanna make sure it's 100 millimeters, you can set it to the entire length and set this at 100 millimeters and say, okay. So we're gonna do a quick check on this draft analysis. The body is gonna be this one here and the pull direction will be there. I'm gonna turn off my tolerance zone and I'm gonna set these at 0.5 and just make sure that the top section is green, and it is, and the bottom section is blue. We're not worried about these end pieces just yet, and that's gonna be okay. I'm gonna go ahead and create that analysis, but then turn it off for now. Next, I need to think about the fact that the overall length of this was 100, and what we actually did was we need 20 millimeters or 10 on each side, so I'm gonna go ahead and make that 80. Everything updates pretty easily. Now that we have it up to this point, we're gonna start creating everything on one side and then mirror it to the other side. So because this is still planar, there's no draft on it, I'm gonna go ahead and select it and I'm gonna create a sketch here. One thing that we can do is we can create a thin rib, so the circle tool, and we can go all the way out or even just a little bit further depending on your geometry. Now, something to think about here is the fact that we have a seam right in the middle, if I rotate this around a little bit, we have the seam here. Now the seam has our one degree draft in each direction. If I just put a cylinder here, I'm not gonna have that draft at that midpoint. So I can't do a true arc here. And the way that we get around this is by taking these edges and projecting them with P on the keyboard. I'm gonna go ahead and project that. Now I'm gonna project this top section here. Then if I use my arc tool, I can go from there to here and I'm gonna go ahead and just put one there and put one there. Now, if I use tangency at the top, notice that it fully defines this curve. We're not gonna be able to have tangency down here necessarily um, because we don't have a true arc coming up to this midpoint. Now, if that's a problem in your design, then you need to rethink this outside piece. It's gonna be okay for what we're doing, having a little seam there but just keep in mind that there are these design considerations that pop up along the way that you need to think about. Again, we're gonna have that, uh, that line there. We're gonna go ahead and mirror these to the other side. I'm also going to mirror these projected pieces because we will need them. The mirror line will be that horizontal line and we'll say, okay. Now, one thing you'll notice I didn't do is really worry about draft in the Z direction on either side of these faces. We'll take care of that after we extrude this. 
So I'm gonna select everything here. I'm gonna extrude this out two millimeters and we are going to join that. Once we join it, I'll go back to my draft tool. The draft uh, pull direction, we're gonna select our mid plane. I'm gonna hold down the left mouse button, select X, Y, and we're gonna pick these faces here. We're gonna set this at one degree. So make sure that you're looking at it from the side Notice that it's actually putting them both in the same direction. And what we need to do is do two sides and the other direction we will do minus one. And you can see minus one is going the wrong direction. So we can do positive one here and that should give us enough draft on those faces. Once again, we can turn our analysis on and just make sure that those faces are green on the top and blue on the bottom. Again, we haven't dealt with the outside yet because we're not done with that geometry. So now let's select this outside face and we're not worried about the draft until we're done. So we're gonna go ahead and make a six millimeter diameter and then we're gonna turn that into construction. So this part gets a little bit tricky because we still wanna keep a consistent wall thickness. So we're gonna do this, basically we're gonna make some rectangles and I'm gonna use a line tool from the origin to its midpoint. That's gonna be vertical and it's going to be construction. I know I'm going a bit fast, but this is just going to be a general overview of how we're doing this. So that's gonna be half of our wall thickness, the wall thickness because we want the middle to be two millimeters. And then we need to think about the thickness of these pieces over here. And we also need to think about the fact that we still need that draft one degree. So I'm gonna take this, give it an angled dimension of one degree we're gonna do horizontal between its endpoint and the origin, and we'll also make that construction. So now what we wanna do is create an arc. We're gonna go from that point up to here, and I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller so I can manually push that tangency here. And if that doesn't seem to work out, you might wanna get it a little bit closer and then do tangency. And if there's a drastic change, one thing we can do is just drag this over and then figure out how wide this needs to be. So ideally the distance from here to here would be about our wall thickness. So I'm gonna draw a horizontal line here. I'm gonna convert that horizontal line to construction. And then I'm going to measure it. So I'm gonna make this 1.25 this upper edge doesn't really matter uh, because what we're really interested in is the section below it. But I do want to make sure that it is at, at least dimension. So I'm going to give it a tangency with that arc. And then we're going to mirror everything that we need. So we're going to mirror this arc. And we're going to go across our vertical. And then I need a horizontal line. Construction. And once again, we're gonna mirror. So we need these side lines. We need this and we need that. Those are gonna be mirrored about the horizontal. And this should give me a closed profile here. Now, one thing I did not do is I didn't take care of the draft inside of here. Sometimes I'll do this in a sketch. Sometimes we'll do it after the fact with the draft tool. I'm gonna to do it after the fact because I already know that I need to draft this outside face. So it's just easy for me to do it then. But in a lot of cases, I might draw it in here. All right, so now we're gonna extrude that out a distance of 10 millimeters. You can see that we've got the split on the side. So if we turn the analysis on, everything's fine there, but we still need to draft these inside faces, that face and that outside face. So in order for us to do that, we're gonna split that end face so I'm gonna come in and do split face. We're gonna split that. We're gonna be using our plane. So again, X, Y. And then we can use our modify and draft tool. So the pull direction is still gonna be our X, Y plane. And then the faces to draft will be these inside faces. It's gonna go ahead and rotate this around and this outside face, but you'll notice that tangent chain is turned on. So we wanna turn that off and we only wanna draft the upper section. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the side, double click the mouse wheel, bring it back in view. So this face is drafting properly. If I rotate this around, 
these faces are drafting properly and that outside face is drafting properly. We could also do a parting line draft. Um, and you can see here that I didn't split that face and I really needed to. So I need to cancel this, double click on my parting, and I need to split that face as well. So let's try this one more time. Draft, this time I'll take a look at parting line. The pull direction is still gonna be the same. So in the origins, it's going to be that XY plane. The parting tool is going to be this line and it needs to be connected. So this is only going to work for uh, this outside face and this face here. And then we can draft this outside face as well as this face here. And it's going to be one degree. I'm going to look at it from the side. And we're going to do two sides. Make sure that it's going one degree in both directions. We'll say OK. And then with that, using the parting line tool, we still need to split these inside or draft these inside features. So we're going to do draft. The pull direction, again, is still that x, y plane. Faces are going to be these inside faces. And I also want to select this one here. Then we want to make sure that they are going the correct direction. So we need to do two sides and say OK. All right, at this point, we need to mirror this to the other side. Now, one thing we could have done with that original extrude is we could have just come out one direction knowing that we had to mirror it. Uh, we could also just mirror this entire thing and uh, combine it all. It really won't matter at this point. So what I'm gonna do is create a mirror. We're gonna mirror this entire body. Just because the splits and the draft features are a little bit tricky, we'll mirror across here and we'll join everything. So because the center is the same, it doesn't really cause a problem for us. If I turn the analysis back on, what we should see is that everything is drafted properly on both sides, and we do meet that one degree of draft. So I know that this is kind of quick. Uh, we went through this at a faster pace than I normally do for this kind of thing, but I don't really want to get too hung up on a lot of the details, but I did think it was important that we follow along with a process like this. So you can understand how, take something like a solid shaft. I'm gonna go ahead and just move this out. Take a solid shaft like this that cannot really be manufactured with injection molding and take care of something like a similar design, but something that can actually be molded. Now there are obviously a ton of different variations to this, but if you're trying to make a mechanical part for injection molding, these are the kinds of processes and things that you need to look at and think about. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm gonna leave this final data set in the description of the video as well, so you can take a look at the final model and, and analyze it if you want. But if you have any questions, obviously you can email me support at or leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.